Hey folks, it's Ardwolf. Welcome and welcome to the return of Traveler Tuesday for the week. As our Kickstarter rewards for last year's Traveler Mercenary Kickstarter have arrived at long last. So there's a whole pile of stuff here and we're going to go through all of it. So the video might take a while, so I apologize for that. I probably could get multiple videos, but we're just going to do it all. This was long enough ago that I have since forgotten exactly what was in it. Um, I have already gotten all of the PDF rewards, which were, you know, I think we got last year sometime. Um, so, but I kind of, you know, it's it's been a while since I've even looked at that. So we're going to look at this with somewhat fresh eyes. The first thing we will open up is the box set. Now, this arrived from Studio 2 Publishing. I'm not 100% sure how to describe the relationship between Mongoose Publishing and Studio 2, but, you know, this stuff arrives in Studio 2 boxes and it has their logo on the back. So, we'll open up the box set first. Now, one thing I'll point out is that they used to do this weird thing where you got like a half cover on the box sets, and they don't do that anymore, and I'm I'm happy that they don't do that anymore, because that seemed, that seemed a bit cheap. Um, and it caused them to not really sit right when, you know, stored up right on a bookshelf. So let's, uh, let's open up the new box set and see what we have. Uh, the box looks to be about an inch and three quarters thick to me. Uh, maybe it's two inches, but it's probably not a box measurement that was done in inches since Mongoose is a UK company. So... Box lid lifts away pretty nicely, and it's a nice thick box. And we have the ribbon inside that will allow us to actually extract all of the stuff. So what we have here is Mercenary Book 3, 2, 1, Mercenary Adventure 0, Trail by Fire. There's a lot of adventures here, and a, oh, this is interesting, a mercenary force roster, which looks clearly designed to be written on. It's got a very shiny surface. I assume it is designed to be written on with um, grease pencils or dry erase markers or something like that. Um, I will have to check the Mongoose website. This is something that will look like crap photocopied. I hope they have a printing and or photocopying uh, friendly version of that available somewhere online. Um, so we'll look at the adventures last because there's actually a lot here as far as adventures. Um, so we have Mercenary Book 1 and these are, well, it feels like about 64, 120 pages actually. Uh, glossy paper, eh, satin finish paper, I would, I would call it. Full color, uh, you know, pretty standard expectation for, you know, modern RPG products at this point is that they'll be full color. I don't care about that too much, but, uh, you know, it, it, everybody will think it looks cheap if it's not full color. So, all right. So in here we have warfare in five dimensional battle space, uh, which is broken down by tech level, which is pretty cool. All the way up to TL 13 plus. It would have been interesting. So one of the, the little hiccups I, I have in a lot of Traveler versions is there's not enough visibility on what tech becomes available at, say, tech, tech level 16 and 17, which are the ones that are just a little bit out of reach. But there are, in the official Traveler universe, multiple systems with TL-16. So it would be really nice to have a little more visibility. There are places where you can find that information, but it's not very complete. And it would have been kind of nice to have like a, hey, you know, it's already the future. Here is what, you know, warfare might look like in the future's future. That would have been nice. Maybe, maybe beyond the scope of the mercenary box set, though. I'd really kind of probably like to see something like a technology guide on how to modify the, the standard technological assumptions of Traveler, um, and, you know, with different types of faster than light travel, for example, and, and, and make a lot of other modifications in that sense. Um, key concepts include the mercenary ticket. So the mercenary ticket, you know, back from the original mercenary book, the, the first expansion book for classic traveler was book four mercenary. And it talked about mercenary tickets, which are basically mercenary jobs. They're basically like the patron encounters, but they're mercenary jobs instead of just patron encounters. Um, so we talk about units, more about tickets, 
Travelers in a Mercenary Campaign. This is one of the classic traveler adventure, you know, campaign formats is a, is a mercenary format, but you end up, you know, tending, it tends to be a combat heavy campaign. Uh, some people like that. Some people don't. Uh, here's ranks and responsibilities. Here's creating personnel, running a mercenary campaign. That sounds useful. A couple of different, uh, an episodic game, a great war where it's one big, you know, conflict. That's neat. Developing the campaign. Raising and running a mercenary force. Information and intelligence. There's a random campaign events. This this should have been a D66 table, I think. And not just a 2D, uh, 2D table. Um just to give you more possible results, I think would have been nice. And now here's a big thing on tickets and there's different types of tickets, commando striker. These are different types of missions that you might be sent on as a mercenary party. Yeah, it looks like there's some mechanical approaches to this kind of stuff. Here's ticket outcome, determining ticket success. It looks like you have a score and then you compare the score to this table that's kind of, I, I, I mean, I personally would be disinclined to treat this extremely rigidly as a game master, but as a, you know, benchmark uh, source of ideas, I think it's valuable. Force capability assessment. You got force sizes. Interstellar transportation. Uh, space required on the transportation. That's pretty cool. Deploying and working up. If you're asking where the mercenary equipment is, we'll be getting to that later. There's a whole book of it. Unit characteristics. Uh, so this sounds like it's got... Uh, let's look at that. It sounds like it's got a full... Yeah, you, there's a there's a mission resolution uh, mechanic that, that might suffice as a mass combat resolution as well. Weakening or expanding a unit, morale, <clears throat> force capability record, mission and operation resolution. There would be a whole bunch of forms at the back of this. So, obviously I'll have to circle back around to the... I will read this material in PDF, of course. So, resolving combat. The travelers are the focus, except when they are not. Uh, overstrength and understrength forces, combat phases, resolution phase, tactics. Who is the primary designer of this product? Uh, Martin J. Doherty, who is a very good at this uh, at, at this traveler business. Tactics. Environments. Interesting. Poor conditions, atmosphere and vacuum, fortifications, obstacles and concealment, different types of terrain. Detailed, well, not different types of terrain, really. Here's a here's a, sm a little bit of guidelines about terrain. Um, detailed resolution. So this is this is a pretty interesting uh, set from the standpoint of if you would like to run a mercenary campaign, uh, because it is it is clearly oriented with that in mind. <clears throat> and I think we're going to see that moving forward through the products here. Uh, tiredness, fatigue, and R&R. Bases and fortifications. Okay, so there's a lot of material here in this 120-page 120, uh, 120 book. <clears throat> okay, so book two is noticeably thinner. It is a 48-page book. Um, again, they're all perfect bound. Um, glossy paper, full color, blah, blah, blah. Okay. And this one is about running a mercenary force. So this kind of looks like the mercenary player's guide. I could be wrong about that. Eh, maybe not. Forming units. Unit influence. Recruiting and training. Salaries. Equipping the unit. Maintenance. Uh, different types of combat assets, including vehicles and infantry, artillery, 
aerospace defense, support assets, units and personnel traits. That's interesting. So units can have tra these traits which can do things. That's it. That's neat. Finding employment. So uh, not quite a player's guide for <coughs> running mercenary units, but it, you know you might end up using it as such. Here's an example ticket. And looks like more discussion of the different types of tickets. Running the unit. Reorganization and personnel. Legal proceedings in case your mercenary outfit gets sued, which is a fantastic and very traveler-esque thing. That's get, uh, get, get to use that admin skill. Okay, and then we have book three in the field. And this feels like about 120 pages. That's yeah, 100 pages-ish. All right. Now this is, I think, an entire book of mercenary tickets. So using tickets. Um, here is background information. Is this all set in like one area? Kind of looks like it is. Okay, interesting. Yeah, so you get like a some pages of background on this, which at a glance looks relatively interesting before you start getting into tickets. Hot recovery. I guess we could be considering this spoiler material, but we're also going to buzz through it really, really fast. So new sheriff in town, team building, knocking on doors, information warriors, Artistic license, platoon tickets, 150, uh, that's 150,000. Uh, yeah, so these are, I think these are like, you know, small group tickets, like your venturing party. This is for like a whole platoon, 150,000 plus bonuses. Industrial dispute, uh, tin pot, crack pot, 100,000 credits. Aid to civil power, target hardening. Company tickets, okay, seven hundred fifty thousand. So I don't know. It looks like we're working our way up the 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 unit size battalion tickets. Yeah, uh, here's a one and a half million credits a month uh, ticket. So there's a there's a lot here. Um, only the first chapter of which will apply to like your regular adventuring party. Uh, the rest of it is if you really are running a very serious mercenary campaign where, where you have access to things like, yeah, that's okay. So I just backtrack over that. Um, specialist tickets. These look like small party, uh, uh, associated tickets as well. But like a bunch of these are like for, for large units and thus will probably only be usable in campaigns where you have access to large units. Uh, specialist tickets, muckraking, defense review, illegal eagles, ticket adventures. Okay, so these are more small tickets. So, so that's my concern was going to be that, um, you know, much of this material wouldn't be usable unless you're running a specific type, not even just a mercenary campaign, but a specific type of mercenary campaign. And I'm pleased to report that, although if you are running that campaign, type, kind of campaign, it's supported by this book, um, that a lot of this material is going to be usable for, you know, groups that are running a less specialized type of campaign. Uh, and we have some mercenary units in the back, which is neat. Good that that's included. And they're in done in a very space-hungry format, I might add, which I'm not a huge fan of, but it isn't the end of the world either. All right, so so that, along with Adventure Zero here, is the contents of the boxed set. However, the Kickstarter was not limited to the boxed set contents, because we, in addition to Adventure Zero, we got Mercenary Adventures 1, 2, and 3, now I'm not going to go through these. I'm just going to kind of glance at them very quickly because I'm they are like actual adventure adventures and where the mercenary tickets are going to, you know, here's this pitch 
basically for an adventure. It's more of an adventure nugget more than an adventure, you know, that's fully fleshed out. These will be fully fleshed out adventures. So Adventure Zero here is, looks, feels like 28 pages, 32 pages. Uh, these are all staple bound, full color. Uh, wondering where these take place. New Moscow is the name that I see. I don't know where New Moscow is off the top of my head. Uh, Tobia subsector. Okay. Uh, in the Trojan Reach. Okay. So that's, or Trojan Reaches. Um, so that's cool that we know where it's at. So the mercenary adventure here. Number one is called Verloren Hoop. Uh, it feels a little thicker, to be honest. It is 40 pages. Written by Martin Doherty. World of Medrealm. And looks like this is in the Gateway Sector. That's neat, actually. There's So the Gateway Sector is on the other side of the Third Imperium from uh, the Spinward Marches. And there has not been a ton, historically, of support material for uh, stuff on that side of the Imperium. Um, but there was a really good source book called Gateway to Destiny for uh, Traveler uh, T20, uh, the D20 version of Traveler of all things. It was the, the best thing for T20, in my opinion. And that was written by Martin Doherty. Um, and uh, it's a really good book, and it covers two sectors, Gateway, and I think the Glimmer Drift reaches, or is it four sectors? I think it might be four sectors. Um, so Adventure 3 is Must Travel Need Guns, which is cute. 40 pages on this. Again, written by Martin Doherty. Uh, this is set uh, also in Gateway Sector. So, we've got a couple of Gateway Sector adventures, which is awesome to see support for that. Oh, we did it out of order. That was Adventure 3. This is Adventure 2 Bug Hunt. I guess you could probably surmise the plot of this guy. This is a 40 pager. Okay. Uh, this is a. This is also in the gateway sector, actually. So that's pretty cool. The uh, the the adventure in the box set is in this is set in the Trojan Reach, so it's in that kind of spinward quadrant. Uh, the other three mercenary adventures are all set in, in gateway, which is which is kind of awesome, actually. I think I will just for the sake of saving shelf space, I think I will pack all of the mercenary adventures in the mercenary box. That appears to work. Uh, we are still, however, not done. So we have three hardcover books, Specialist Forces, Mercenaries of Charted Space, and the Field Catalog. Now, the Field Catalog is where the gear is, so we will look at that last. And we'll look at the thinnest of the three additional hardcover supplements, which I think were stretch goals of the Kickstarter. Um, not the world's hugest fan of Kickstarter as a company for a variety of reasons which you may not surmise, um, but one of the few things I will reliably back is new Traveler stuff from Mongoose. So, uh, okay, so Mercenaries of Charted Space, uh, written by Martin Doherty, looks like different kinds of mercenaries. Mercenary, oh, cool. So here's, so this actually goes like uh, polity by polity. The Imperium, the Jordani Consulate, the Varger Extents, the 2000 Worlds, the High Federation, the Soleimani Confederation, the Aslan Hirate, and the non-line regions. That's actually awesome. This is how... Yeah, the maps are nice, too, actually. Uh, so we got, like, codes here that tell you where, you know... This is DF, so this is Delphi Frontier. This is kind of a middle of nowhere. The hell is this? This is not the Jordani Consulate. The Jordani Consulate's up here. This is the, um, the, the Julian Confederation. Yeah. Oops, typo on the map, guys. Gotta fix that. Uh, Spinward Frontier. W means the Windhorn Frontier, which basically means that there's probably Vargers, p pirates, causing problems up here on that border. Okay. All the other polities appear to be labeled correctly. So, bad map artist. Uh, so, it actually talks about each of those frontier areas, which is pretty cool. I'm liking what I'm seeing out of this book, other than that embarrassing map error. So there's folks who are going to make a big deal about that, and it shouldn't have happened, but I'm not going to lose actual sleep over it. So here's a uh, field company structure. Here's a platoon structure, which is cool. Okay. So we've got uh, mercenary units here. Ooh, here's a whole brigade. That's pretty cool. A whole uh, armor brigade at that. 
That's pretty cool. So a variety of different mercenary units in the operating in the Imperium at a variety of different scales. So this here's a company, here's a platoon, here's another command team is what that's called. Um, and then here's a whole brigade, which is cool that they gave you a big one like this. Okay. Uh, and then this is the Varen subsector. Where is the Varen subsector? This sounds like it's inside the Imperium. Um, here is the Ninic subsector, which is, okay, this is actually part of the Antares sector. Uh, Ilalish, who, which, you know, who, who knows if I'm pronouncing that as intended. These are all randomly generated words anyway, so I don't think it really matters. Um, the Jordani Consulate. So here's mercenaries in the Jordani Consulate. That's actually fairly interesting. One wonders how the uh, the mercenary life fits into the perfect utopia that is the Jordani Consulate. Perfect utopia being used ironically in this sense. Okay, here is uh, uh which, you know, again, you know, best guess as to the pronunciation of that. They're all randomly generated. Um, okay, so here is the Varger Extents, which you can see is kind of this huge sort of disconnected uh, space coreward of the Third Imperium. And the Jordani Consulate is actually labeled correctly here. And the Julian Protectorate is not, or Confederation or whatever it is, is not even labeled. So that's awkward. Um, okay, Mercenaries in the Extents. This is probably a, a place where there's a lot of mercenary activity, I would think. Okay, here's a, looks like company-sized Varger uh, mercenary unit, which is cool. Uh, here's part of Deneb sector, and actually the Tugliki, uh, you see the border between Deneb and Tugliki runs here. The 2000 words. If you're unfamiliar with any of the stellar cartography that I am doubtless dropping as though it means, you know, should mean something, uh, do check out travelermap.com, which is kind of the definitive, uh, traveler map, but also kind of the definitive online web based tool for RPGs, if you know what I mean. And if you go there and look at it, you'll see what I mean. Uh, the 2000 worlds, which is the interstellar polity led by the Kukri. Uh, ooh, here's a big force right here. The Lords of Thunder. Uh, so that's a kind of a big forward plot hook, too, is the Lords of Thunder. Uh, the Hive Federation. The Hivers themselves are really not much at shooting people, but uh, they have uh, uh, client races that, it, I should say Hive Federation member races, that are very much uh, inclined to shoot people. So... Uh, the Lenger sector. I'm not even sure where that is, actually. Even I don't know where that is. Uh, here's the Soleimani Confederation. we got a whole book on them, of course. Here is a company. There's the Aslan Hirates. Aslan are another, you know, one of the major alien races in Traveler that, uh, you know, a lot of them end up doing mercenary work for reasons that we're not going to talk about here. But check out my video on the uh, Alien module, the, the recent Aliens of Charted Space book, uh, if you are interested. And I, I'm pretty sure I mentioned uh, some of the Aslan uh, social background that results in that kind of behavior. Uh, this is Astral Quadrant. There's a there's a subsector we haven't seen very much on ever. Um, somebody did a source book on it back in the third party days. Non-aligned regions. So... Here is a company-looking unit, something like that. Ah, here's a bigger one. Maybe a regiment, something like that. And we didn't get a subsector in the not. Well, maybe we still do. Uh, we do, actually, in the Trojan Reach. Okay, that's a bit of a cheat, since we've, we've gotten so much material in the Mongoose era on the Trojan Reach that it is approaching, if not surpassing, the amount of material we have on the Spinward Marches. That's a good thing, but I would also like to see, you know, m more supporting material for other parts of, of uh, the official travel universe as well. All right, so we'll put our lid on over here. And yes, I'm going to have to make a shelf space adjustment to get all this stuff to fit. All right, Specialist Forces. Another hardcover. This feels like 128 pages. 140, looks like. Ooh, chips. 
Cool, cool, cool. Okay. Once again, written by Martin Doherty, who's just, you know, killing it on cranking stuff out here. All right, so this is like Special Forces work stuff, uh, which looks to me like it's something that's a bit independent of the, you know, the mercenary thing as such. Certainly uh, would be applicable to a mercenary campaign, but you could also use this for other stuff too. Um, if nothing else, for, you know, when your players have done messed up and you have to send special forces after them commando specialists skirmishers recon and stealth specialists snipers and sharpshooters sniper teams engineering and heavy weapons super heavy weapons one wonders in the far future what qualifies as a super heavy weapon but that is discussed here not man portable stuff stuff like this um, that's a serious looking piece of ordnance. Okay. So you had a lot of like artillery piece type, uh, type stuff here, uh, all with costs in the mega credit to tens of mega credits range. Um, and these run from, here's a heavy mass driver that runs a TL 12, um, Anti-bunker missiles and please plasma, uh, anti-bunker missiles are TL-9. 450 millimeter bombardment howitzers run from TL-5 to 8. So you do have a good range of, uh, of different tech levels on this, although I, I'm, I'm not seeing anything from 6 to 7, and certainly we didn't forget about artillery during that time. So here's some nuclear warheads. Here, here's your TL-7 stuff, actually. Nuclear warheads. Tactical plasma weapons at TL-12. Hypervelocity cannon, TL-13, nice. Nuclear dampers and meson screens, biological and chemical weapons, heavy bombardment, batteries, aerospace defense. Okay, here's an Vixen ADV aerospace defense vehicle. So this sounds like it is like mobile flak. Because it looks like a, like a tank. Looks like a ground vehicle. It's even got a Big dirt moving shovel on the front. Uh, planetary aerospace defense missiles to TL 10. Protected forces. Generic term for troops trained and equipped to fight in hazardous environments. Okay. That's cool. Bases, maintenance racks, mobile support units, powered armor. I mean, powered armor in, in a broad sense has been in Traveler since the very beginning with Battle Dress, but um, it, it, different editions of Traveler have kind of waved their hands at that. I don't know that there's true mecha available really anywhere, but uh, we're, we've, we, we've skirted that in a number of places too. High energy weapons, all at relatively high tech levels. Uh, here is actually, you know, directed meteoric assault. Uh, which is a thing that happens in sci-fi. I've seen the, you know, a, sh a show that was on recently. I'm not spoiling anything. Uh, TL-8 stuff. Military vac suits, which does have a decent armor value. Non-combat specialists, including advisors, consultants, electronic and cyber warfare, which you got some equipment for that too. Security and intelligence specialist. You can mine this, I'm sure. Empathy class security sled. Okay. Looks rather unpolice car like, but. Star Mercs. Not like we haven't covered that already. Uh, kind of feeling like there might be some overlap here, but maybe not. There's some. Um, looks like there's a bunch of tickets, actually, which is nice. Boarding actions. That could be potentially useful. Of course, there are, you know, in the history of Traveler, there have been entire independent games dealing just with boarding actions. Okay. Hatchbot. That's neat. One of those things that kind of skirts the mech idea, much like the power loader from Aliens, right? Assault cutter. Grenades. Mercenary vessels and modules. Okay, ships, troops, barracks module. Interesting. Ships, troops, ready module. 
Platoon Cold Transport Module. Platoon Transport Module. So I think the idea is you put these modules in your cargo hold, something like that. Because it says in hold, that's that's what I'm registering. Pika Breacher Shuttle, that's cool that that's here. Peltast Mercenary Escort. Broadsword Mercenary Cruiser, the classic Broadsword Mercenary Cruiser. The big globe-shaped 800-ton ship. There's a TL-12 version here. Um, you know, they, they went away in, in some of the recent products. They went away from these isomorphic deck plans, and I was very happy that they did, but here they are back with the isomorphic deck plans. And then again, this is from a Kickstarter that was like a year and a half ago, so, so there's that. Uh, Ranger Operational Support Vessel. There is, of course, you know, a generation of deck plans of this particular ship, so... I can always go look at the Classic Traveler ones. And you, if you need them, you can go buy the Broadsword Supplement for Classic Traveler on Drive-Thru RPG, which contains those deck plans. Um, Ranger Operational Support Vessel. Oregon op Mercenary Frigate. And we got some some stick on the last page, which is a thing that I often notice with some of this mongoose stuff. So they, got, they oozed out, the cement oozed out. That's irritating, but, you know, not a world-ending catastrophe either. All right, finally, we have the field catalog. This is the thickest of the three hardcover books, and it feels like it's uh, closing in on 200 pages. And, in fact, it is just about 200 and a few pages. So <clears throat> this bad boy is going to be the gear book. So we're going to buzz through this pretty fast. Our, our, uh, authored by Martin J. Doherty, shockingly enough, Soldier, let's look at the table of contents. Soldier loadouts, weapon traits, personal weapon design, personal and light support weaponry, personal equipment support weaponry. So this is going to be a, a uh, you know, guns and ammo forward equipment book here. But it does give you some new weapon traits, concepts and special circumstances, sustained fire and weapon overheating, area fire, suppressing fire, area and point defense, manually guided weapons, attacking vehicles, signatures... Detecting and locating, high and low penetration. There's a whole lot of uh, stuff in here to add complexity to your traveler combat if you want it. Personal weapon design. Now, mentioned here is the central supply catalog, which is kind of the catch-all traveler a tech equipment book. Not really a tech book, but a equipment book. Um, and this is a more specialized book than that. But it does include a, a method for designing weapons. Now, that is an interesting addition. That is a thing that has been in Traveler before. Um, originally, in Traveler the New Era, there was a supplement called Fire Fusion in Steel, which, unfortunately, like a lot of GDW product from that era, it had significant errata problems, but not enough to, once you had the errata anyway, you, you had enough information to make it work. Uh, and it was a very detailed sort of tech building uh, book where you could design ships or guns or armor or all kind of different things. Um, this looks like a, and, and there was a later Fire Fusion and Steel for Traveler 4th Edition, which was a disastrous errata situation and which was never really completely fixed and was very clearly never really play tested thanks to whatever product churning out schedule that Imperium Games had going on. Um, recent video on that was very good, by the way, by Willie Muffin. Um, so check that out if you are uh, subscribed to Willy, who does not do all gaming content, but it, that was very good. Okay, so a lot of additions here to uh, to you know if you really want to you want a guns heavy campaign. There's also a uh, a Greg Porter product from back in the day that might be available on Drive Through now. I don't know. I haven't checked. Called Guns Guns Guns, which is basically a guns building system and then you build the gun in that system and then there are conversion guidelines to convert it to a variety of other um, uh, systems that were popular at the time including at least one version of Traveler so uh, looks like a lot of stuff here so this is not a gear catalog is what I'm getting here once again we're kind of leaving out you know T TL 16 plus you know what does that look like um Again, there's places to find the information on that, but at no point do you get full information on that. You can extract a fair amount from the monumentally disorganized T5, for example. 
So there, there is equipment in this book. So here's a whole bunch of guns, for example. But um, there's rather a lot of guns. So this this book looks like part uh, like a hype sort of hybrid book um, on firepower in your science fiction game. Some artist who really loves to draw guns got a real workout illustrating this book. Heavy accelerator weapons. And there's going to be a variety of different tech levels here, and I'm not going to quote the tech level of every single weapon in this book, because there's a lot. Very, very Elite Dangerous Odyssey-looking uh, weapon here, and Christ, that looks enormous. A lot of different stuff. Personal equipment. Thermal regulation covering. That's neat. It's an environment suit. Not like we didn't have plenty of those already, but uh, uniform bundle. Not sure we really needed that in, in an entry. Eh, it doesn't hurt to have it. I mean, at least it gives you a cost. Say, so, hey, it's, you know, 50 credits for a pile of uniforms. Electronic stuff, tactical relay network for the comms guy. Battlefield coordination unit. Support weapons. At least some of these look like they're supposed to be somewhat manned portable or possibly tripod mounted or something. Really high tech level stuff like this is a, is a, is this a TL-15 item? It's MDS-15, so maybe, maybe not. Uh, it's got to be here somewhere. Um, some of this stuff may be like grab-stabilized uh, heavy weapons that are enormous, but that you can wield, uh, you know, a, that can be wielded by a person. There's mines, sensor, sensor fence, fackles, term derived from field obstacles. Interesting. So basically, uh, caltrops... Uh, it looks like looks like portable barbed wire more than anything else. Okay. Heavy weaponry, automatic cannons, heavy auto cannons, Gauss auto cannons. So a lot of additional heavy equipment: field armory, field medical units, field barracks, field nuclear dampers. Um, Workshops, satellite launchers, fusion reactors, vehicular citadel, uh, vehicular NBC protection. For those who aren't clued in, that's going to be nuclear, biological, and chemical. So if you, you know, that in that kind of situation, you could deploy this vehicle. And there's vehicles too. Fast attack vehicle, which looks like a speeder bike of some kind. Uh, here is a field ranger utility vehicle. A uh, 10-wheel off-road transport vehicle. Looks reminds me of the truck from uh, an old movie that uh, I can't remember the name of now. Light armored combat vehicle. Military grav platform. Fast attack platform. Grab sled. Presumably you could put a vehicle on the back of that. Saita grav tank. Grav transport, starships, diplomatic skiff, gravitas class. Interesting. This is a 200 ton ship. Now, shadow class gunships. They're somewhat halo looking ships. I have, I have, so you didn't have to. I watched some of the Halo TV show and it's pretty bad. Uh, Daced class assault ships. This is a 600 ton ship. Borwin class transports. And weapon design worksheets in the back. Okay, so that has been a nice long video and a whole large pile of stuff that has just been deployed from the Mercenary Kickstarter for Mongoose Publishing and their Mongoose Traveler 2nd Edition system. Uh, looks pretty good. It's definitely a lot of stuff. I'm glad I have it because it is Traveler. I don't 
really have any intentions of running a mercenary campaign of this time, of this kind, particularly soon. But, you know, you never know. Could, could Something weird could happen in the future. So if you have found this video instructive or useful, please do give it a thumbs up. Please do subscribe to the channel. If you'd like to help support Art Wolf Slayer, please do check out the links in the video description to the Patreon, the merch store, and the Ko-Fi. Until next time, thanks for watching, and happy gaming. 